So okay. first, would you please tell us your name? Yes, my name is Henry Baylor. All right, and can you tell us about what you brought to the harvest today? Sure. Uh, I brought uh, the history of my uncle, William Bomber, Bill Bomber, uh, who was uh, captured in uh, uh, flying over North Korea mm -hmm. and part of China. And uh, his B-29 was shot down, and he spent two and a half years in a prison camp in China. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, it was called Peking. Now it's Beijing, and uh, he spent the majority of that time in solitary confinement. And then my grandmother was instrumental in getting Dwight D. Eisenhower to get he and ten other people, prisoners, released. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a ton of documentation that my mother kept, uh, which I've shown you relative to the many times she got in touch with President Eisenhower and finally got the Red Chinese to release Uncle Bill. Mm -hmm. All right, so would you like to go through some of the, the pictures that you have here? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, I have, can I give you just a little bit of uh, history about Uncle Bill and then start sure. with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, uh, he joined the Army. At the time, uh, it was called the Army Air Corps, not the Air Force. Mm -hmm. He eventually became the Air Force, but he joined when it was the Army Air Corps. Uh, he became a pilot for B-17s, and uh, when World War II was over, he finished his enlistment and uh, got his degree at Bucknell University. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the Korean War broke out. And uh, he decided, uh, after several phone calls from the government, to go back because he was a trained pilot. And the new B-29 uh, was now going to be the super fortress to win the war in North Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he became a pilot, uh, and it was his last mission. And uh, he was, uh, quote unquote, dropping leaflets it's really questionable yet as to what the B-29 was doing, mm -hmm. but the North Koreans shot it down, and Chinese North Koreans, mm -hmm. uh, same same. And uh, he uh, was shot while on the plane, while he was the pilot or co-pilot, and uh, lost his leg because of the shrapnel and the bullets mm -hmm. that went through his leg. But while he was parachuting, he lost his gloves, and they were at a very high altitude, and he got frostbite. So. When he ended up in prison in solitary confinement, they amputated his leg and his fingers. Mm -hmm. uh, so then he came home and uh, became a school teacher uh, in Milton. In fact, he taught me algebra. <laughs> and uh, uh, he eventually then became a guidance counselor in, in the Warrior Run School District. Okay. And he mm -hmm. passed away in 2004, I think at the ripe old age of 82, somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay, now, mm -hmm. in terms of his uh, 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 prison time and being shot down. Uh, here's a picture of him uh, uh, as a pilot with his with his hat on and so on. Uh, what's most interesting also is the picture that is there on the bottom of he and Grandma when he's getting off the airplane. The uh, uh, release of him was directly a result of my grandmother and writing to Dwight D. Eisenhower almost every day saying, I want my son back. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the president then uh, sent her a letter, a letter which I could not find, uh, saying that he would be released. And in fact, he was. There is a Life uh, magazine article about his release. We had a grand parade, which I recall. Uh -huh. I was maybe seven years old. There's a picture of me here kissing him right there. Yeah. And uh, he was able to uh, survive the prison uh, he wrote two books, one about the prison itself and what he went through. Uh, he was a pianist. Uh, he played the xylophone. I played his trumpet in the high school band that was given to me. He played the drums and he was instrumental in starting the Keystoners Drum and Bugle Corps when he came back from World War II. Uh, he was quite a guy. Uh, he uh, had a very interesting sense of humor. Uh, he took life serious, but he also uh, was able to deal with just about anything you could give him. Mm -hmm. right. So what was your question now? Oh yes, yeah. so are there any other pictures that you'd like to talk more about? Or? Uh, no, the, the ones that I have here mm -hmm. uh, are, these are the generals that are receiving him. And of course, that's mm -hmm. not general, that's me. I think yeah. I was six years old. Uh, this is uh, the family, that's Uncle Bill, his four sisters, and uh, my cousin Barbara. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a picture of the uh, float that was uh, at the uh, judge's stand for the parade. And of course, this is him with his pilot helmet on, oh, his yes. ears and so on. Mm -hmm. But the, those are. And this is a, uh, 
a uh, letter from George Bush. Mm -hmm. uh, when he passed away, uh, President Bush uh, sent this letter to, to uh, my, my family, or his family, mm -hmm. the surviving sisters, and uh, saying that uh, he was a war hero and recognized him as such. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool for Milton, too. He's, he was a great guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. He believed in Milton. Uh, he promoted Milton. He was born and raised here. Uh, he lived here the rest of his life, and uh, he, uh, he was kind of like my hero. Mm -hmm. So he's, would you say he's really important to, to the people of Milton, too? Oh, absolutely. I think that uh, the core people of Milton uh, uh, recognize who he was, rec remember him, at least those of us who are of the age to remember him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he is one of the icons for Milton over mm -hmm. the course of his 200 years mm -hmm. to be soon. Yeah. And that's too bad he isn't alive to experience this 200-year birthday. But he would be joyed to know that he's part of it and it'll be uh, archived. Wow. Okay, so are there any other thoughts that you would like to add to this interview? We have some time left. Oh, we do. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, there's a story just to kind of give you the humor. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a sailor, and I asked my uncle if he would go sailing on the Chesapeake Bay with me, and he said, no, 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 and finally one day he called, and he said, you know, I, I think I'd like to experience at least once going on a sailboat. Now, it's a substantial boat, mm -hmm. and it takes more than one person to sail it. So uh, I called a friend of mine, knowing that Uncle Bill was missing a leg, missing fingers, and uh, I uh, said, hey, Jim, you go sailing with us next week, and I'm going to take my uncle, who is a bit handicapped, mm -hmm. and uh, I need crew that I can depend on, would you be willing to go? He said, sure. So we met in Annapolis. We sailed out for the weekend and uh, ran into some fog. Now, Uncle Bill was an engineer. Uh, it was a degree in mechanical engineering. He was a navigator before he became a pilot. So he knew how to navigate, basically. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, uh, we, we were trying to pull into Harrington Harbor, and we're still about a mile out. And the fog came in so bad that I couldn't see further than four feet. Mm -hmm. Now, I have no idea where I am. Uh, I didn't really take a good bearing before we got in the fog. It just kind of came in. And uh, well, Uncle Bill, being the person he was, mm -hmm. the education he had, I said, well, Uncle Bill, here's the charts. And I have what's called a Loran, which is pre-GPS. Yes. Stage one of GPS. It's fairly accurate. And uh, I said, uh, well, Loran's down there, turn it on, get our lat longs, and we'll plot it. And, and uh, he's down there, and he had this habit of going, burp, 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 burp. I mean, he, he uses his knuckle. So uh, he's down below, and he finally comes up with the charts, and he plots them, plops them down on the table, and he goes, burp, 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 right there. And it happened to be right in the middle of Baltimore, and Baltimore Avenue and 3rd Street. Well, little did I know that my Loran needed to be uh, calibrated. But uh, he was able to remember where we were in our coordinates, and he figured if we fall off 15 degrees, we'll run into the buoy. And we almost ran right into the buoy oh 15 my gosh. minutes later. So uh, he saved us. Wow. Well, that's a story. He didn't panic. He was the kind of guy that just took things as they were. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so, yeah, as I said earlier, he's my hero. Wow. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.